Okay, so we use OmniAuth in a lot of our projects. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about what OmniAuth does for us and why you would use it, and in particular look at it in terms in the context of the uh, Canvas starter app. So um, OmniAuth is a library that handles our OAuth uh, connections. So anytime you want to use a third party to sign into your website, they'll use a protocol called OAuth. So you've probably done this a number of times, probably without even knowing it. Every time you sign into another website via Facebook or maybe Google or Twitter, or a lot of developer sites will have a GitHub login. They just have a button there, you click that button, and then it says, do you wish to allow this other application access to your GitHub account, to your Facebook account, so on and so forth. So whenever um, you see that, it's using OAuth in the background. Now this ar arose from a, a need a long time ago where there were sites that would aggregate some of your social data, for example. So back in the day, you used to have to share your credentials with third-party sites. So you might want to allow somebody to help you filter your email, as an example. Well, before OAuth, you used to have to give your actual username and password to the third party. Well, that made those third parties um, a prime target for an attack. Because if I could hack one of those websites, I could get all kinds of usernames and credentials that I needed to uh, log in and, and wreak havoc all across the internet. And everybody decided that was a really bad idea. So, um, OAuth was born from the need to be able to allow third parties to access a website on your behalf. So OAuth is now um, typically used kind of in two contexts. One is if you don't want to build a sign-in for your website, you can set up OAuth and maybe just allow people to sign into your website via Facebook. There are a lot of apps like that. I think Pinterest originally required a Facebook account for you to even sign in. So you just click the Facebook button, you'd have an account and away you go. It makes things really simple. Uh, so as far as a login system, OAuth can do that. Now the other thing OAuth lets you do is gain access to an API on behalf of the user. And you'll see that now, especially when you log in via Facebook, it will tell you this application wants to do these things. And it's usually, um, if they're really just using it for a login, it will say things like this application will receive your email and your avatar because that's kind of all they need to set up a login. Others will say they'll, they'll get access to your timeline to post on your behalf. Uh, and maybe if you're using something like Pinterest, that makes sense because every time you post a pin to Pinterest, maybe you want it to be shared on your Facebook timeline or whatever. So um, OAuth makes our life much easier when we work with Canvas. Well, easier and harder at the same time. So a couple of years ago, we created the uh, Canvas strategy for OmniAuth. Okay, and I'll, I'll talk about what that is. Uh, OmniAuth is just the base um, code needed to deal with the OAuth protocol. It doesn't have any logins built into it. They extracted them all out into what are called strategies. So whenever you want to use OmniAuth so that you can make your life simpler when you want to deal with OAuth, you install the OmniAuth gem and then you'll install a strategy. And they have a very long list of strategies here. I click on this, you can see there are all kinds of services, many of which I've never even heard of, like 23andMe and whatever. So and there's this Amazon. Um, Automatic is the guys who make uh, WordPress. So there are a number of different services, most of which we won't use in, in our typical applications, but it's really nice to know that if we have a project that's specific, where maybe somebody wants to connect a buffer, there's probably an a OmniAuth strategy for that. And we created the one for Canvas, which is actually a little bit different than all the other strategies, and I'll show you why here in just one second. Uh, I guess the summary of this would be that OmniAuth makes your life much easier when you need to deal with OAuth. Okay, so inside of the Canvas Starter app, anytime we want to 
access the Canvas API, you have to do so using a token that you received via an, the OAuth dance is what they call it. So the user goes to um, the application that we create. There's a button that says, you know, log in via Canvas or request permissions. They push that. Canvas says, this app wishes to access Canvas on your behalf. Do you want to allow this? Yes or no. As long as they click yes, we get a token. And then that token is the value that we pass back and forth in the headers anytime we make a call to the Canvas API. All right. <clears throat> this is how you set it up. Um, the first thing would be, you know, in your gem file, you need to include OmniAuth, and then you would include OmniAuth Canvas. Of course, for other strategies, you would have OmniAuth-Facebook or OmniAuth Twitter. For the most part, our applications are going to be OmniAuth Canvas. So now we can do this um, configuration inside of device where we have uh, config.omniauth. We specify that we want to use the Canvas strategy, and then we give it the secret or the ID in the secret. So the ID is going to be a value um, provided to you by Canvas. Uh, if it was Facebook, then it would be an ID provided by Facebook. Uh, and so on and so forth. You have to go to each of those providers and request that ID in secret. So uh, this is the value that we request from Carl at Instructure, and he sends this over to us so that we can um, connect to Facebook. Now there's one other piece of this that's interesting, which is each time uh, one of these requests is made, a request to connect to Canvas, this setup method right here is going to be called. So you can have a, a, a Lambda function here in the setup, and that will give you access to the environment. Uh, and what we do is we wrap that in a rack request so that we can then figure out what the Canvas URL is going to be. Now, the reason we have to do this is uh, connecting with Canvas is different than connecting with other providers. When you do an OAuth request with Facebook, for example, the URL is always the same. It's always going to be um, something facebook.com. Uh, same with Twitter and same with all the other providers. However, with Canvas, it's different because everybody has their own Canvas instance at a specific subdomain. So this Canvas URL will vary. It can be, for example, usu.instructure.com would be Utah State's instance of Canvas. Or it might be harvard.instructure.com if it was Harvard. Um, so before we attempt to do the OAuth dance, we have to set the URL uh, where the user will be redirected to during the OAuth dance. And that's why uh, the Canvas OmniAuth gem is a little bit different because it requires that you set that up ahead of time. Um, and that's what you can do inside of this little setup method here. Uh, and you can see that we can get it from the request. Sometimes we have to store it in the session. Um, and if none of those match, then we just hard code it to the default, which is canvas.instructure.com. All right. So now once we've got all of this set up, now comes the actual part where you can interact with the OAuth uh, requests. So we have this OmniAuth callbacks controller inside of the, con the Canvas starter app. The uh, OmniAuth callback controller is the guy who receives uh, the response when the OAuth dance is complete. Uh, it's actually, uh, OmniAuth makes our life really easy. To start the uh, OAuth dance, all that you need is um, a link, which I think we've got some of those in here. Yeah, so in this links uh, partial, you'll see that we've got this um, sign in with Canvas. So it's this new Canvas authentication path. Uh, for other providers, it would be something like new Twitter authentication path or new Facebook authentication path. Uh, OmniAuth adds the URL helpers to create the, the right URLs. So to start the OAuth dance, it's, it's just a link. You click that link, it redirects you out to the provider. Once that's complete, you're going to land back on this OmniAuth callbacks controller. All right, so we have a whole bunch of before filters uh, that handle that response. So the first thing we do is we verify the OAuth response. In other words, we want to make sure that it is valid, that there wasn't a man in the middle attack. So um, this will 
verify that there weren't any errors, that the user did in fact say yes, um, and so on and so forth. Make sure that everything about the response is okay. And if not, it's just gonna send the user off to the new registration URL. We can customize that depending on the project, but as a default, it's just like we give up, go sign up instead of um, signing in through Canvas. Uh, okay, so that's the first thing that, that happens. The next is we, we call this associate uh, using OAuth. So that is going to attempt to find um, an existing user. So if the user is signed in already, then uh, we can <clears throat> we can add the Canvas authentication to an existing user account. So this is handy if, um, if you've ever messed with very many of these services, a lot of times on their uh, profile page, they'll allow you to say connect to Facebook and connect to Twitter, and they'll have multiple OAuth or multiple OAuth providers that you can connect to. Uh, so this associated using, which I think it should be associate using OAuth instead of associated. Not sure, messed up some grammar there, but that will uh, this method will associate uh, the user with a currently signed in user if they are indeed signed in, uh, and then it has a whole bunch of error handling depending on what happen, like if they couldn't save the authentication, so on and so forth. All right, so assuming that um, that method continues on, in other words, we didn't return some kind of an error, or have an error while we were processing this before filter, we're going to hit this find using OAuth, and this will find the existing user in the database. So if we've already found them, then we're done, and, and we can just return that user. Otherwise, we've got this find for OAuth in the user model that takes uh, the auth object that's passed to you uh, during the uh, response. So OmniAuth, across all of the different strategies, provides a consistent object and attempts to put them all, put all the different values in the same place. So request.env, omniauth.auth uh, is how you access that object. And I've I won't go into a lot of detail, but if you look at the code, you can see all of the different values. You know, um, look at the user model. And you can see how we take that off and look for uh, their first name, their last name, their email, and other values, uh, depending on what the provider provides you. And it does vary by provider. For example, I think Twitter does not give you an email, if I remember correctly. Um, I don't know that Canvas consistently gives you an email. I think that it frequently does because people use their email as their username. Uh, but different providers will give you different information. Okay, so if we find somebody, uh, great. We'll go ahead and update them and make sure they're associated with the account and so on and so forth. Uh, if we don't, then we're going to drop into this create using OAuth, uh, which is the last filter. So that method uh, will take the data that is provided in that omniauth.auth object and attempt to create a new user based on that data. So creates a blank user, takes the auth data, applies it. Um, maybe it is worth taking just a quick look at what that code looks like. Let's go to grab apply auth. Um, so we're gonna create a new user based on these uh, params for create that come out of the auth, which is this guy right here. So you can see we, we find the name. Um, we try to find a first name, a last name, an email. Uh, we also try to get their time zone because that's been an importance in some of the projects that we work on. All right, so then we associate the user with the account and we save them, save the user, and as long as that is successful, then we'll sign them in, register, and go on their merry way. So now there's a user in our system. Uh, we have a token that is actually stored in a separate table. So there's a user table and then there's an authentications table. So a user can have many authentications and all of those different authentications um, allow you access to the different services. Uh, in particular with Canvas, since you can use different URLs, you can have multiple Canvas authentications, uh, each with their own separate token. Uh, that's useful for people who are admins across multiple Canvas instances. Okay. So just to quickly recap, OAuth is a protocol that lets you easily connect to third-party services, do things on behalf of a user against those third-party services APIs. Um, it also lets you create a login system without having to 
create a login system. So uh, people can quickly log in and not have to go through the whole enter your username and pick a password and everything that they typically have to do. Okay, I'll post a link to the code. Are there any questions? Okay, 